What's up, everybody? It's good morning. It is right now 5.23 a.m. on this Wednesday morning. I am getting ready to head over to the Rowdy Watch for National Signing Day, actually. Right now, yes, I am tired as can be. And I won't be there all day long. I cannot wait to be able to watch National Signing Day, get the good coverage. But yeah, and unfortunately it's raining a little bit. I'm still going though. This ain't stopping me. <laughs> okay, it's pouring a little bit, but a little rain. Who cares if it's pouring? Ain't stopping me from going. But yeah, I will keep everybody posted. Come some of the names coming in, so yeah. See everybody when I get there. All right, everybody, it's around now 5.40 in the morning. And you might be able to tell I got rained on a good bit, but I could care less because this Rowdy Watch is totally worth it. You know, just the idea of being able to watch signing day in person from right outside the war room. I will take being drenched on by rain any day. But yeah, hopefully the rain will kind of, you know, slack off soon. So I can give you a little bit better discussion about what I feel about this. So yeah, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, then oh well. I'll, I'll still try my best to give a little bit of coverage. If not, I'll take breaks and hit certain points. So everybody's just, I know I won't, might not be able to do every name coming through, but I'll definitely make sure I'm doing it for when some of the names come through and then yeah. So hopefully that stuff will work. All right, everybody, what's up? As, I'm sorry, I just want to apologize for not doing this all in the same day. I actually decided I was gonna watch signing day. I didn't really get to vlog from there. Like I said, I was going to, but I am very sorry about that. I just didn't know how well people would like that, you know, just hearing a bunch of us cheer for certain names coming through and only getting hyped for really certain people. But other than that, I actually decided I got the list of all the guys we had signed in total, and I thought I'd give my own personal little reviews on them instead. So you can kind of count this dealing with all the stuff from signing day. And yes, it's done on two separate days. I know that. But, I, you know, I feel like it'll be easier for me to do this. So, And like I said, my brain, I was so tired after the end of the day. I could not get this done yesterday because I was literally there for a very long time. But I am going to just talk about all the early, en the early enrollees first that are already on campus. And then I'm going to do the guys who signed on signing day. And I will just let everybody know about all of these guys and just give my personal opinion on them and see what I think but the all right one of the first early enrollees we had learned about was three-star corner DJ Henderson from Lindman South Carolina played at Dodge City Community College in Kansas I think DJ is gonna be actually pretty good watching his highlight tape he's got he's very versatile I think he's I think he's got some good speed behind him He's got pretty good size on him, 6'1", 180. So I think he's going to be a pretty good addition to the team at corner. I think he's going to be able to easily help us out on the field because this kid, he seems like he's going to be one tough kid out there who's really going to give his all. And I just cannot wait to see what he can do and help add depth to that defensive back position. I wouldn't even mind seeing him try a little bit at nickel. Like maybe, you know, not just do a lot of work at corner, but do a little bit of nickel back. Next thing was another early enrollee, four-star corner, Mark Will Osborne from Cornelius, North Carolina, went to Huff High School. Mark Will is a guy sitting at 5'11", 183, and th this is all going off one report, just like whatever scout had them listed at. So that's what I'm going off based on what I got from uh, some of their recruiting rankings. That's how, where I'm getting this stuff from, from one thing. But yeah, like I was saying, Mark Will, like, again, watching his highlight tape, this kid's got speed. He has got speed. He is good with, like, able to get to where he needs to be. 
He's got good hands on him, too, to where I could see him getting some good interceptions in a while. And I think he'd actually also be a good addition to, like, you know, at work on special teams with a return man. I think he could be some, a good guy to get some good reps at working for, like, return yards because this kid is one that I was kind of actually excited to hear about. Just, you know, kind of being kind of close to my hometown area. So, yeah, this guy I think is a great addition to our team as well. Well, actually, you're going to hear me say a great addition. All these guys are. Next up, four-star wide receiver Jeff George from Leavenworth, Kansas, who played at Dodge City Community College. He is sitting at 6'6", 190, and yet he is tall, which is what I like about him. I know the team will want it. Coaches will get some good weight on him just to bulk him up a little bit because 190 at 6'6", yeah, that, that's a little skinny. But still, the thing I like about him is his height. When you're gonna, if you put him up against like corners that are six one or five eleven or even like anywhere from five eleven to six one in height, he can easily pro- he'll have that height advantage over them to where they're they're gonna seriously have to jump and he can still jump too with a good height on him to help get the ball to him. So I really hope Tennessee utilizes him as a good target because it we don't I mean we have some pretty we have good receivers out there too. And I think this kid's going to be a great addition to a wide receiver you here at the University of Tennessee. And the last early enrollee we have is four-star defensive tackle from Atlanta, Georgia, played at Fort Scott Community College, sitting at 6'4", 295, Alexis Johnson. Watching this kid's highlight tape, he is good. He is going to be a good guy to have on that inside of our defensive line, especially just so all of our a lot of our other guys too he even him including can get in that rotation and they can all stay rested to where these guys don't have to worry about getting exhausted completely and it has a better chance of keeping these guys healthy which is what we need here just adding an, and also a big body like him that can help close up some gaps in the middle to where it's going to be harder to run through the middle when you put him up there with guys like Khalil McKenzie and Shy Tuttle, who are all over like 310 pounds, both those guys are. So that is gonna that someone him like him can easily help close up that middle. And I really cannot wait to see what those four can do. I've already, it's kind of cool, you know. They're already on campus. They're already getting workouts in, which I like. It's letting them go in and learn their position, so it'll help them go in and get a better field. And I, I cannot wait to see what these guys can do at the orange and white game, which is our spring football game. I cannot wait to see how these guys actually look. And next up is coming to our guys that we signed on signing day. And if I think I got them right, I got them in order of the way when their letters came in. So we started off the day with all the newcomers on national signing day. I think it was a, I forgot what time it was. I think around might have been between it was between 7 30 and 8 o'clock when we received the first fax from a guy who was not enrolled already and that came from Marquez Callaway four-star wide receiver from Warner Robins Georgia went to Warner Robins High School he is sitting at 62 170 believe me when I say this this kid is very athletic to where he's played both sides I saw he's got phenomenal hands great speed and he knows how to get around some of these defensive guys, which is going to be good. And a great addition to wide receiver U here at University of Tennessee. Marquez, I cannot wait to see what he can do, especially with that help of the wide receiver. I definitely see him getting a lot of playing time this his, fresh, his freshman year here. Yeah. And like I, the early enrollees, I do all see them getting very good substantial playing time as well. Maybe some, not as many as much as others, but definitely... Like, Jeff George, yes. Marquez Callaway, yes. Alexis Johnson, yes. Because, like, sometimes your wide receivers and your linemen need a lot of depth. I mean, we still have a lot of depth at defensive back, but I do still see with just that community college experience and with Osborne here early, I see those guys all getting substantial playing time in their freshman year. Or not their first year here at UT, not all of them are freshmen. Excuse me for that, but like I said, all of them are going to get substantial playing time. I feel like their first years here, on Rocky Top, wearing the orange and white. 
The next letter that we had coming in was from Nathan Nehaas, a three-star offensive tackle from Cincinnati, Ohio, went to Coloran High School. And I am sorry if I say a lot of these places wrong and these high schools wrong. I apologize. He is right now 6'6", 255. I know once he gets here, that weight will increase. A lot of people are thinking 255 on a lineman, that's a little small, like a little underweight. But still, this 6'6 height of him sitting there, that is going to be a great addition to the team. I think this kid already has, like I said, I know he'll bulk up when he gets here, which will be good. But still, a kid who's sitting at 6'6 at offensive tackle, I like that actually. Because I think he's going to be a good player out there to where, you know, maybe see the field a little bit. Hopefully can work his way into the rotation. If not, take that red shirt so you know he has, that's why he has a chance at four solid years of playing time. Then right after that, him coming in, we had our next letter came from another offensive tackle. This time, four-star offensive tackle Ryan Johnson from Brentwood, Tennessee, playing at Brent, who played at Brentwood Academy. Ryan is sitting at 6'6", 275. And I cannot wait to see what Ryan can do. Ryan has been committed for a long time. I think he was really one of our very first commits for this signing class, actually. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think he was the first commit of this signing class, of the 2016 signing class. And he has stuck with us ever since then. And the thing I like about it, it's a home state boy. When we really push to help get these guys here out of the state to come make Tennessee great again, we can get guys like Ryan. And which I cannot wait to see what he can do. Because, like I said, I've watched all these guys' highlight tapes. These guys are impressive. Ryan is good. It's like, when I was listening to what, I think it was, I don't remember who it was who said it, but uh, they were also correct, said something about his highlight tape, is the way like he helped draw some of those blocks, it really helped open some holes for that run game to where even him, oh yeah, like a lot of that big holes were opened up to where his running backs could get a lot of yards, and th which was good, and which is going to be good for us, especially with some of the running backs we have. It'll definitely help them, and it'll help our O-line guys too. I would love to see Ryan work his way into the rotation his freshman year. I'd love to see almost all these guys step onto the field in their freshman year if they'd be able to. But I know that can't always happen. But believe me, I believe Ryan is going to be one phenomenal offensive lineman by the time he graduates here from Rocky Top. Next up, one of my favorite kids that we had signed in this signing class. A four-star QB out of... Oradell, New Jersey, played at Bergen Catholic High School, 6'4", 205 pound, Jarrett Garantano. What I really like about Jarrett, he's a good dual threat QB. He has an arm. He can literally get that ball down the field, which is going to be good for us. I mean, yeah, we have quarterbacks that can throw, but still, and this kid can also escape when he needs to. He can easily take off running down the field. This kid is very athletic. And go, like when I listened to Eric Ainge, what he said, with the way he kind of uses his whole body to throw the football, it looked like it gave him much more power to where he can get this thing down the field pretty well. I think Jarrett is going to be a star by the time he leaves Tennessee to where, who knows, maybe this is really early speculation, but who knows, maybe by his senior season, there could be talk about Heisman campaign for him. He could be winning, helping us win championships. This is a kid who I really think is going to help lead Tennessee to greatness. Because, really, sometimes, yeah, you nowadays, especially in college with the dual threat QBs, I mean, some of them don't make it well in the NFL. Some of them do. But, really, I still believe Gar Garantano is going to be a great quarterback for here at the university. And I am happy he is coming to Rocky Top. And I really hope I can get the opportunity to meet him. He seems like a really cool kid, too. And I, think, I just think he's going to be a phenomenal player. And then shortly after Garantano's letter came in, we had the letter arrive from Balin Buchanan, three-star corner from Sewanee, Georgia, played at Peachtree High School. Balin is sitting at 6'11", 187, which I think is phenomenal size for a corner. Heck, 
he's even getting almost to that point where, you know, bulk him up a little bit more. He could be a safety. I think he's getting kind of close to that safety size, just with my opinion. I could be wrong, though, because I never played football. Just watching it from what I've seen, usually, from some of Tennessee's safeties, I'm saying he's getting up there. I would love to see him play nickel a little bit, too. But, yeah, phenomenal speed on this kid. And definitely listening to what he said of how Rocky Top felt at home, he never felt it's like he. Had, this is something that he really felt was re- the right fit for him. I'm glad when you ha- we have players like that who easily fall in love with this place and can easily say see themselves staying here for four years, which is good. Balin, I would love to see him get in the rotation for there because even though we do have a lot of defensive backs, it's just going to be good to get him. Even if he can get on the field just for special teams, that little bit of experience will help him to where he can grow for the future and become a, hopefully a star here at the university. And then another, here's another three-star prospect. This time, offensive tackle Marcus Tatum from Daytona Beach, Florida, played at Mainland High School, 6'6", 254. And there's another 6'6", kid right there coming in, which I like. Just adding that extra depth to the offensive line is what we can need. Because sometimes in the past, when our line has been at a deficit, we hurt. We struggle. And the thing I liked about watching him as well, kind of going back to like referencing with Nathan and Ryan, these guys, it looks like they could play almost anywhere on the line too. It seems like they got the skills to where they can be developed to play anywhere on the line. And these guys, I cannot wait to see what all three of them develop to be for part of the offensive line pride here at University of Tennessee. These guys have some great footsteps to follow in, and they have real good potential to be good stars here. And then again, people, you might hear me say that about everybody, but then again, everybody does have potential to be a good star at their school. It all just depends on their hard work ethic, so you're going to probably hear that a lot from me. Next up, probably one of my most favorite guys that signed one that I was really praying was going to and I had a good confidence he would five star safety from Sewanee Georgia also at Peachtree Ridge 5'11 189 Nigel Warrior Nigel Warrior is a legacy kid here so that's what makes me even happier to have a kid like him come into Rocky Top and play his father Dale Carter was a phenomenal player here at the university And I cannot wait to see what Nigel can do. What I've heard about Dale Carter and how great he was, if Nigel is anything like his dad was, he is going to be one hell of a player here at the University of Tennessee to where I could see a lot of all SEC honors coming this kid's way. I definitely heard he fits in pretty well here at Rocky Top. He felt like he did. He loved it here and loved the environment. And I really do hope he can live up to that legacy. I know it's like sometimes, you know, people feel like with those legacy kids they're going to be in the shadows of their parents or the family whatever family member was here but then you feel like sometimes too these kids are going to be standouts and that's what I feel about Warrior I easily see Warrior working his way into that rotation at safety his freshman year because right now Tennessee does not have a lot too much depth at safety and with Warrior coming in I think that is going to be a great addition to our defensive backfield And I cannot wait to see what this can do on Rocky Top. And as we all said uh, yesterday, we won the Warrior, which is what we were using, said when we had gotten Nigel Warrior's commit. So I cannot wait to see what this kid can do for sure. Next up, Carlin Phil's aim, three-star running back from Naples, Florida, at Naples High School. He's sitting at 5'11", 175. Carlin's got good speed behind him for sure, which is a good thing for running backs. And the thing I like about him, he's such a young running back too. He will be able to learn from two great stars we have already out of Jalen Hurd and Alvin Kamara. This kid is going to be able to learn under their belt and just see how and be able to learn from them, look up to them. And I think learning from guys like those two, this kid's going to turn into one phenomenal running back. I would love to see him get work at special teams too, with trying to take off some stuff, take off and run. Because I watched, like I said, this kid's highlight. I think I did see him t- do a couple of kick returns. Oh yeah, he tore it up. He knows how to get around these defenders. 
I could see him being a good, phenomenal player here at the University of Tennessee for sure. Get him developed for sure. And I think he's going to be one of those great speed backs. Like everybody says, you have a speed back and sometimes you have your power backs. I think this kid is going to be a phenomenal speed back. Mainly because of his size. He's not as big of a power back as somebody like Derek Henry is or Jalen Hurd. But this kid is going to be one phenomenal speed back, is what I'm going to say. Next up, fellow teammate of his and from Naples, Florida. And these act to what I learned is these two actually live together. We got four star corner or defense I think yeah, it was corner. Tyler Bird, 5'11, 160. What I am happy what I think is pretty cool about Tyler. The day before, the night before signing day, he flipped from the University of Miami because he said he just really fell in love with this place because he could also see what pretty much his, as he would say, his brother fell in love with. And I could easily tell that. It's good. I really like what I'm seeing out of Tyler. He's going to be one phenomenal corner here at the university. I think he's going to have great ability on that field, and I cannot wait to see what he can do. Again, he's one of these kids that is like that we're all a lot of us are going to probably want to see a lot of great things out of, especially what we've been hearing from him. And I cannot wait to see what this can it can do. Next up, we had a little thing. I had looked it up. It was we had taught out of Knoxville, Tennessee at Webb School, 6'3, 230 pound tight end Andrew Craig, who I heard accepted a preferred walk on spot thing I like about Andrew Craig is that's some pretty good size on him. He does seem like a very athletic kid, and I cannot wait to see that out of him, like what we can do. Because, I mean, sometimes you can never have too much depth at certain positions. And even though they, we might have a lot of depth at tight end now, who knows? They could move him and use him, utilize him somewhere else. But really, someone like him... Or even if we throw, want to throw in like two or three tight ends at one point just to help throw up some good blocks, a kid with some good size on him, like him, can help get some very good blocks set up, which is going to be needed to help open up runs for your run game and give your quarterback a little bit more time to pass the ball, which is what I'm going to like. Next up, moving on, the four-star wide receiver from Shreveport, Louisiana, Corey Henderson Jr. from... Evan Gale Christian, 6'1", 170. Watching Corey's highlight tape, he is a phenomenal receiver. I saw him as like one of those guys who can play in the slot <coughs> or as like one of your main receivers. He can pretty much play anywhere on the field, I've noticed on offense. Even if you, you want to throw him in and hand him the ball off and do something like that, run a reverse, get him the ball, I think Corey is going to be a great guy to use. Definitely, like I say, where you're wide receivers, you need a lot of, usually a lot of depth. I easily can see Corey working his way into that rotation for his freshman year and getting some substantial playing time. And who knows, maybe by his senior year, he could be our leading receiver. It's only time tells when it comes to stuff like this. But Corey is a great addition to our team just because where we love to utilize receivers and it really is helping Rocky Top get back to being known as wide receiver. You getting a lot of top receivers out there. It's good for us. I cannot wait to see what Coach Z can do with this kid. Because in my opinion, Coach Z is a great wide receivers coach. And he's got a lot of good kids coming in. He's going to develop and make them phenomenal guys by the time they leave here. Next up, we had... Hold on. <coughs> Four-star linebacker. Jaquane Blakely from Moultrie, Georgia. I, Mul I think that's how you say it. From Colquitt County School. 62210. Yes, at first, a lot of people are going to hear 62210. That's a little small for a linebacker. But what we got to look, though, too, is these kids are coming out of high school. They're not used to the college workouts yet, like the college weights. So some of these kids will really add on the good bit of weight once they get to college. I watching his highlight tape. He's a kid that it will be able to develop into a good linebacker here, or even like the movable linebacker, defensive back kind of player. I think he will have a phenomenal career here. Like I was saying, 
I feel like he's got really good speed and, you know, the drive, like all these kids do to really get better themselves. It's like coming here too. it's like pretty much seeing the great guys we've already had come through at linebacker, like Al Wilson. I'm going to say one of my – who was a great linebacker. One of my favorite linebackers that played here, even though he played a little bit of linebacker and defensive end, I hate that injuries kind of happened to him, Kurt Majit. Like, seeing him being able to take over, like, kind of a linebacker spot and, like, play, like, the position, like, great names like those guys had played for, like, in that position, that is good. Especially when it can, like, hearing all these style of guys that Tennessee has helped produce we can get a lot of these top guys out there. And next up addition, we had another wide receiver addition. And ironically, another one from Florida. Brandon Johnson, three-star wide receiver from Plantation, Florida at, from American Heritage, 6'2", 175. This kid is going to be a good one as well. Got great speed, great hands on him. And to where I feel like he is going to be another guy who will see the field. I actually almost kind of feel like all of our wide receivers we signed will see the field their freshman year. Like the four guys we signed that are freshmen, I feel like they will all see the field. And then I feel like our Juco guy will see the field as well. I Just because, like again, you can ne it never hurts to have too much depth at wide receiver, which I cannot wait to see what Brandon can do when he gets to Rocky Top. Next up, we had a local Knoxville boy from Knox out of Knoxville Catholic High School, six foot, two twenty five long snapper, preferred walk on Logan Punch, who actually, you might have heard of his name, his dad, who is like works with ESPN and a former NC State player. I am sorry if I got that wrong. I think that's what I had read. But yeah, again, I think that's going to be a great addition to have a kid that knows what he's doing at long snapper. I mean, he'll have. Riley Lovingood, who's already here as a long snapper, they'll be able to really work together and get that going. And it's like, whoever knows. It's like, I don't think it would ever hurt to have too many people out there because it's just, if you never can know what could happen with injuries. And who knows, you could always move some of these kids to other places if needed. Next up, one guy I am very excited to get one of the top prospects in the state of Tennessee here. Just like form, fellow uh, Tennessee native Ryan Johnson, like he is not the same position though, another four star, but this kind from Nashville, Tennessee, at Nashville Christian School, 6'3", 228 pound linebacker, Daniel Batuli. And I cannot wait to see what this kid can do. Even I think I remember Al Wilson commenting on him what he has been able to do already in high school. He is one of those kids that has been able to get to that backfield a lot and cause a lot of disruption, which is going to be good. That's the way, you know, it's not just going to be your D-line that can be causing it, but even someone like him that can be causing a lot of pressure, that can lead to some really good things here on Rocky Top. And yeah, he's on the smaller side, but one name that's on the smaller side here that plays linebacker, Jalen reeves Maben, phenomenal player. Mabin is an excellent player with a, who's got great talent here as well. With guys like Daniel coming in that can learn from him, Mabin. And even, like I said, uh, let me try to find the name. Like Blakely, who is coming in as well. Be able to learn from guys like Reeves Mabin, Darren Kirkland Jr., Dylan Bates, Austin Smith. Like many more names as well that are playing linebacker here. I think it's going to be good, which is going to work for us because it'll help us out in the long run. Here was a name that I was, was not expecting to see actually come up, but I learned about it on signing day. This kid was originally committed to the University of Miami until signing day. He was a fellow commit of Tyler Bird. We have four-star wide receiver out of Lake City, Florida, played at Columbia High School, 5'11", 175, Latrell Williams. Latrell is a beast. And when I tell you a be beast, I mean he is a beast at wide receiver. One thing I like about this kid, they had clocked him apparently at a 40 time, a 4-2-1. That is phenomenal speed right there. 
a kid with that kind of speed that can get down that field, that is going to be a good target to get the ball to him. Especially, like I said, when if he can easily beat a lot of those corners by a good, like, even if it's by, like, uh, point, like, oh two seconds or, like, even point two seconds, that's going to be good. Because as long as he can get ahead of these guys, I feel like he's going to be a hard kid to catch. And I cannot wait to see what he's Adding a name like him to wide receiver U is going to be phenomenal. Another name we got in, another local Knoxville, Tennessee boy from Christian Academy of Knoxville, 6'4", 218, three-star tight end, Austin Pope. I watched Austin's highlight tape, and just because I saw some of the Knoxville games were on TV, I actually got to watch one of Austin's games in action. Seeing what this kid can do is great. He is very athletic. Like, he can go up for the ball and he'll really do his best to haul that th the ball in and make some phenomenal catches and he is going to be a kid I think could be a playmaker definitely I say we'll b I know we'll bulk him up a little bit and who knows where he'll play if they switch him over to a wide receiver from tight end do it or even if they want to keep him at tight end do it I think this kid is going to turn out to be another good tight end here because especially where like I said your tight ends they can easily help out a lot too, which I cannot wait. Definitely, this is the last player we had saw outside of the war room where I was standing come in. This was a kid who all of us, I know we loved seeing everybody come in, but one kid who was originally supposed to commit at 10 o'clock and then pushed it back, did not tell us, kept all of us waiting. I was so praying that we would assign this kid and we did i cannot wait to see this kid in action as a tennessee ball from surrey british columbia played at arizona western community college 6'6 260 pound five star strong side defensive end jonathan kongbo and all i'd say is the hype from all of us students that were there waiting to hear kongbo's name if we had gotten him soon as we heard it, we erupted. Watching his highlight tape, he is fast. He is good at getting off that edge and getting around those offensive linemen to where he is going to cause trouble for quarterbacks. I know he is going to cause some serious trouble. And with the guys we got on the D-line that can also play defensive end between Derek Barnett, Corey Vereen, Latroy Lewis, Kyle Phillips, adding Kongbo, and even having Andrew Butcher, and even with Daryl Taylor. Those guys right there at defensive end can help easily cause some good disruptions. And that's the thing I'm going to like about having that many, is the depth. These guys will be rested for sure, to where I don't see these guys ever getting exhausted as much you know, they may get winded after some big plays and being out on the field a lot, but the thing is, we have a lot of talented kids as well that can help add that depth to where we can see some great things from these guys. Kongbo, I feel like, is going to be a phenomenal player. No, I know he's going to be a phenomenal player. After watching his highlight tape, he is the number one Juco player in the country. So that is the thing. A kid like him is going to cause some damage. Especially being on the side the opposite of end of Derek Barnett. I said, I cannot wait to imagine seeing him and Derek Barnett on one end. And then adding Khalil and Shy in the middle. Or any combination of throwing our other guys in. Like Danny O'Brien, Kendall Vickers, Damara Mixon. Uh, let's see, who else? Andrew Butcher, Kyle Phillips any of those guys out there that Tennessee has as a D lineman throwing them into that mix I cannot wait to see how that goes Kongbo is a great addition to our team and I know like me all students were so excited to get him and all of us cannot wait for this kid to get here and put in work and as Kongbo said he is helping gonna get Rocky Top back on top to where with all these guys we signed I really see all of these guys having a chance to win 
not just one, but at least maybe two national championship rings while here. These kids have a good chance at even getting a lot, several SEC championship rings to where they could be known as SEC champions and national champions. And I cannot wait. And the last guy we had gotten signed in, his letter came in a little later. Three-star tight end from Washington, D.C., St. John's College High, 6'5", 225 pounder, Devontae Brooks. Looking at that, I love his size already. Devontae is going to be great with getting the ball. I know he will. He's got good hands on him. He's going to have that good size to help throw up some good blocks to where that is going to help us out in the long run too. And especially with him being, there's a really good chance to him to see the field early as well because of size. I know injury had plagued him in his, I think it was his senior year to where he had tore his ACL. But I think I saw some good news that he should be really ready to go and play by the sum, get for when summer workouts start and fall camp comes around, which I cannot wait to see what this kid can do. I am excited about all of these guys that Tennessee signed. The 21 guys whose names came through on uh, letters, like or all these kids. Not I don't know how many kids letters or. I think 21 is what we had said we had signed in total with letters. And even the kids who were listed as preferred walk-ons that are set to come in, I literally cannot wait to see what all these kids can do here at the University of Tennessee. I am very happy they chose the volunteer life because they are literally going to help make Tennessee great again. And I cannot wait to see it. I know, like me, again, all Vol fans are super excited to see what these kids can do on Rocky Top. And I feel like we are really coming back to where Tennessee is going to be a team to possibly beat next year. I could already see us giving a good running for the national championship in the playoffs and even the SEC. Every my, people, I know you're going to say I'm probably being biased because it's my school, but looking at the talent Tennessee has and the depth we do and seeing the guys we're bringing in, there's a good chance. Even listening to guys like Greg McElroy from SEC Network who used to play quarterback at Alabama is giving us props. A lot of these guys are saying with the kids that we have committed, and especially after the guys we signed, Tennessee is coming back. That I would just like to say, but yeah, and I cannot wait. But all right, everybody, that is it. Thank you, everybody, for actually taking the time to watch this and my little thing about signing day. And... It definitely shows you how big this is for Vol Nation. And like, and this was, I have to admit, it was such a great experience to be able to go watch National Signing Day in person. I was pretty much there all day. I got there literally like at 6 a.m. I woke up at 5.30, to, or no, 4.30 to go watch that. And it was such an amazing experience. I encourage anybody that would have the experience to go watch it at their school. If there's a place for you to go stand outside and watch it, do it because experiences like that don't come so often and I feel like you know okay some of you might not care as much but still in, even if it's something that doesn't interest you go for like 20 minutes experiences like this rarely come and I mean seeing stuff like this and getting to learn all this stuff more it's amazing and you get to see like a lot of the passion people bring with this stuff still but yeah like I said everybody thank you for coming out and watching this uh, as y'all know like I have po my social medias I have posted before my Twitter and Instagram are both T McB 13 so please give me a follow on there I would really appreciate it especially now with sports seasons I'm always usually doing stuff with sports like talking about it like retweeting talk giving my opinions on it and even with my stuff I'm doing like my live broadcast on you now you'll see me doing stuff like that but yeah please everybody show support I love the support and everything it means so much to me and I'd also love it if y'all would subscribe to it and if you guys like videos like this I can do it more like this but I mean sorry if it won't be for your school it's gonna be more from based on my school just because I'm around it a lot more and I hear all the stuff a lot more just being pretty much on campus all the time and even getting to know several of the athletes it lets me get a lot more insider stuff as well 
But again, thank you everybody for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Please hit that like button. And just from what I got to say is Vol Nation, if y'all are watching, I know y'all will want to hit that like button for sure. I really have to say this just to get it out. I'm definitely a VFL, a Vol for life, will always be. And all I got to say is if any of these guys who signed watch it, this or anybody does on Rocky Top, that would be kind of cool. But really, for all Vol fans out there that want to watch this, they'll agree with me. Ain't no better place than Rocky Top. And all I got to say is I'm out. I'm Swimmer2068, better known as Tyler McBee. And from me to all of you, I just want to say thank you again. Go Vols. Vol Nation is coming. We are coming back on top. Go Big Orange.